Next, the allergy epidemic. Allergies are the bane of so many Kiwis' lives, and allergy immunotherapy is the focus of Maligan Institute researcher Professor Franca Ron Kersey's work. She was born in Italy and moved to New Zealand in 1994 to set up a research program at the Institute after being awarded a Maligan Senior Research Fellowship. Her group is trying to better understand the initiation of allergic or T helper 2 immune responses. Franca, I'm just thinking back to growing up. My father had severe hay fever, so an early memory of mine is sneezing through the night and being on medication that made him drowsy. So sneezing is a very early memory for this. (laughs) And that was a few decades ago, but it feels now that those allergies we thought of, hay fever and asthma, (laughs) we knew of then, there's so many more allergies. And I know this is your study area, but what the heck is behind this? Uh, Lynn, that's a, a very good question and a question that uh, is uh, probably not easy to answer at all. Uh, my experience has been very similar to yours. My dad didn't have allergies. I had cough. I had asthma as a child. And I remember all this coughing I used to do at night. But at the time, it was still a few children like myself had uh, the allergies, but it wasn't common at all. Now it seems that uh, 15% of children or similar in New Zealand have asthma, and then there is other kinds of allergies and so on, such as uh, eczema or food allergies and so on. And uh, the reason behind it... Uh, It has happened so quickly that it cannot be due to genetic reasons. It must be to do with uh, either exposure, which is unlikely to be the case because obviously allergies to pollen uh, should have been as common as they were. The trees around us haven't changed. The plants are the same. The uh, indoor environment is probably not that different. It must be something uh, to do with... uh, the conditions in which we live. And in fact, uh, uh, if one goes and compares the rate of allergies in different countries around the world, uh, they seem to be much more common in Western countries, like, for example, New Zealand, Australia, the UK, United States, and less common in countries where the conditions are less, uh, how can I say, uh, le- the standard of living is not as high, where the foods are different, maybe the cleanliness levels. Developing nations, nations, yeah. Yes. But uh, we see it happening as other countries, for example, like Asia, are improving their standard of living. They are also increasing the rate of allergies. So it seems to be a link. So the fact that we have a very defined diet, uh, that we are not exposed uh, to the same uh, environmental pathogens, we call them infections. Uh, uh, You have to remember that... uh, Maybe, say, 150 years ago, children mortality was still fairly high. Now it's very rare. Any infectious diseases that children are affected to will be cured with antibiotics, for example. Uh, the fact that the diet is more restricted means that the, the bacteria we have in our uh, intestinal tract are also uh, less variable, and uh, our diet is probably more rich. People tend to be heavier, healthier, and uh, all this combination uh, in some ways uh, results uh, in an increase in allergies. And why exactly is difficult to pinpoint. Uh, The changes have been so great over these years uh, that there's probably not one case but a combination of these. When I listen to that, I'm thinking, how the heck then do we combat that? I mean, A, as you say, the understanding, we're still trying to understand it, but it makes sense what you're saying. I agree with you, it's difficult. So one has uh, supposed to look at uh, uh, the combination of all these uh, these, uh, factors. One thing that we still do not understand in great detail is exactly what are the stages that initiate an allergic reaction. And uh, that's uh, part of the work that we do at the Malagan Institute and other groups around the world do. So if we don't understand what are the key factors that uh, must we presume change, uh, that change because of the environment or our exposure to infectious agents. If we understand how these uh, uh, affect uh, the factors that uh, contribute to the initiation of allergy, then we should be able to try to make sense of it in some ways. Uh, At the moment, it's an observation. These are studies done with great populations where it's difficult to pinpoint a cause and effect, but uh, a number of things come up regularly, so they seem to be credible. Thinking back to my own hay fever and a trigger factor. So walked through a field with high dry grass, had a huge attack, bang, that was me for the next few years. And as I've got older, it's Mm -hmm. faded away. It happens for some people in some conditions, it doesn't for others. But is that idea of a trigger, you know, your your Mm -hmm. immune system being overwhelmed by something, is that uh, common knowledge or am I making it up? 
our understanding is that you, uh, the first time you realize you are allergic is already too late. It's because you have been exposed in the past. Uh, you have probably been exposed to the same grass or pollen or whatever. Maybe in smaller amount, you might not have noticed or you might have noticed, but you didn't feel sick, so you didn't worry about it. And then uh, this reaction develops in your body. And when you are exposed the next time, then uh, is when you start having the symptoms that can be anything like in your case probably was uh, yes, yeah, sneezing, watery eyes oh, and so on. Mm -hmm. Or you might have tightness of breath uh, and uh, feel that you cannot breathe and uh, there's a whole range of reactions that can be more or less scary or you might have hives on your skin for example that's another common reaction but yeah. a trigger event isn't necessary it might come even if <laughs> you're not you don't have a major exposure to whatever you might yeah, have an allergy absolutely. to absolutely and uh, okay. it doesn't necessarily have to happen the same way that your allergy uh, reveals itself later so the fact that you start sneezing doesn't mean that you were exposed the first time to the allergy via your nose necessarily. You might have been through the skin. That's one. Another thing the scientists do not understand uh, in detail, what is the first route of uh, exposure to allergen and whether one route is more conducive to allergy compared to others. And what about uh, the hereditary nature of mm -hmm. allergies? I mean, as I said, my, my dad had it, my mum yeah. didn't. The three of us girls have all had hay fever to some greater or lesser yeah. extent in our lives, yeah. but I don't know if that was inevitable. Well, it's clear that there is gene a genetic component, but it's not strong. Just having the genes will not make you allergic, and, uh, and uh, it's a gradation. There's, uh, we, the understanding is that there is many genes, so they can uh, there may be several that make you more sensitive or few so that you have a, a greater or a smaller uh, chance to develop allergy obviously in family is is also difficult to distinguish uh, you probably have been living in the same house maybe in the same city or town exposed to a similar environment so that would also contribute to the fact that you developed similar types of allergies i would imagine I think it's reasonable to assume that it, that is a, a, a cause, the fact. Being exposed to the same environment and having shared genes, the way we understand that at the moment this complex disease is, is the environment and the genes both play a role. Genes that make you susceptible, very susceptible, will give you an allergy even if there is a, not a severe exposure in the environment, but a severe exposure in the environment will give you allergies if your genes do not predispose you strongly to it. We were talking before about um, our environment and yes. now this obsession with being 99.9% you know bacteria free through cleaning agents they've had a lot of yes. kind of negative publicity if you like and is that can you see that as being part of it that we have become too obsessed with cleanliness and that there is a role for germs and bacteria in, in our lives it's a good question. Uh, we do not know how important this is, but there is evidence that it can be important. That there is still, for example, some studies that uh, people involved in studying allergies always quote to each other. They come from Europe, where in some more traditional communities you still have people living near the stable and being exposed to animals, where children are less likely to have some diseases, allergic diseases, such as asthma, for example. And why that is, uh, we now understand, uh, and these are fairly new studies, that uh, whatever you are exposed to in terms of infection can have a, actually a, a lifelong uh, lasting effect on your immune system. There are some cells in our bones that give rise to all the cells of your, our immune system for all our life. And uh, if these cells are modified in some ways, the sort of the tone of the, of the immune system changes a little bit. Uh, it would be like... Um, I don't know, what can I say, if you are exposed to an, aller uh, to, to an infection, you are more likely to react uh, favorably if you are exposed to another infection, which is similar later on in your life. And maybe at the same time, this makes us more uh, vulnerable to allergies. The fact that we are not exposed to this makes us uh, perhaps less resistant to infectious diseases and a little bit more vulnerable to another type of immune response, which is allergies. <laughs> jury still out on that one? I think we don't understand the mechanism yet. Uh, the, is the jury still out? Yes, uh, it, it needs... Uh, 
We know it can happen. Does it explain the allergy epidemic? Uh, that we, we don't know. It might explain 1% of it. Uh, so that's not going to be very useful. 2019, what are you going to be focusing on in terms of your research in this really fascinating area? What we are doing, we have been doing in the last few years, is um, trying to focus on the early stages of the allergic response. And what we have learned are some interesting things. Uh, uh, during this time and we have identified some molecules that we have been confirming to be important and some other ones that we did not expect to find but uh, we think we can do better and continue these studies by doing a more thorough analysis basically where we compare allergic responses to other type of immune responses to be more precise in pinpointing which are the type the points of difference so that would be one of our big focuses in uh, in during this year Following a few molecules that uh, we know are expressed by these cells, this, uh, are the first cells in the body, immune cells in the body to handle allergens and figuring out what they do, and then hopefully find some more. Uh, how can I say? It's very long term, but, but uh, we think it's important to understand how this, these various molecules may change with the environment we are exposed to. How can they change with our diet? Can uh, they change with our long-term exposures to, uh, to infectious agents and so on? And, uh, and uh, if it helps us even a little bit uh, to try to understand uh, not how to cure allergies only, but how to prevent them, which would be really the biggest goal that we have, that would be great. Well, yeah. that was my next question, really. Yeah. This is not going to be something where... Uh, you're given a pill or an inoculation and yeah. you're cured yeah. for life. This is far more complex than that, isn't it? Yes, yeah. It is complex uh, uh, for many reasons. One is that, as uh, we discussed, we don't understand it very well. It's also quite important because uh, often the people who are affected by these are children. So whatever we do to them is, uh, is going to have an impact for all their life. Uh, so one has to be very careful, obviously, in uh, trying to decide what to do. You mentioned the word epidemic before. It's a word that we're hearing in terms yes. of obesity, the mm -hmm. obesity epidemic we're very aware yeah. of. I hadn't heard it attached to allergy, but because of the proportion of the population, mm -hmm. growing proportion of the population, the severity mm -hmm. now of the allergies, it really is an epidemic, isn't it? Yes, yeah, we call it uh, the allergy epidemic uh, in uh, the allergy studies uh, research groups. Yeah, yeah, because uh, it's, uh, when you start to talk about 10%, 15% of the population, that, that's, uh, that's a lot of people. Obviously, some are not uh, severely affected, but uh, still it impacts on uh, their day-to-day -day life. Uh, yeah. Like you see children in a school, often they have the little pamper. Uh, if they have tightness of uh, shortness of breath, they have to use it and so on. So or I don't know, I remember friends of my daughters coming to our house and visiting and sneezing the whole time because uh, <laughs> obviously there was something that wasn't good for them and uh, it's not life-threatening to sneeze uh, for one hour but it's very tiring and definitely has an impact on your social interactions uh, and uh, you don't need to, we don't need to have that. Is asthma within what you're studying? Uh, yes, it's uh, within the range of things that we study. Uh, I have to say I was lucky. I grew out of my uh, asthma with age, and that can happen, or, or you can develop asthma at later stages. And we don't understand why that hap happens exactly. That's but, but particularly uh, bad in New Zealand, though. We have one of the yes. highest rates, don't yes. we, of yeah, childhood yeah. asthma. Uh, Associated with poverty, is it, would that still... That is, uh, that is probably due also to yeah, living condition, unfortunately. No one should live in houses that are mouldy, that uh, are uh, full of fungal, fungus, uh, they are too damp and so on. We study some of these allergens in the lab and uh, they are horrible. They, they, they are very damaging to cells, so you, you, people should not be exposed to that. It's actually... As I say, unacceptable to live in those conditions. And uh, if you want to try to uh, explain why these uh, these uh, spores and these uh, molds are so damaging, uh, we are, we know that this same type of immune response that we have to these uh, allergens is similar to the immune response we have uh, to parasites. And parasites, uh, multicellular parasites, normally are, for example, coming into your body through the soles of your feet if you walk on infected grass or through your skin and so on. And then they move around your body. They burrow through, th through your skin and then your tissues and go to the blood and so on. And some of these molds and allergens have some similar properties in some cases where they can damage tissue and uh, presumably that's why they are also uh, inducing allergies. Professor Franca Roncarsi from the Maligan Institute.